Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining me for Morning Devotions. If you would, please share this video. And uh, if you got a friend today that's going through something and struggling with uh, wondering if God loves them, if God will forgive them, if God will abandon them, if God will forsake them, or and, and all mixed up, this video is for those people. Um, and you can put me in the list with those people. I'm going to confess something to you, which is you probably don't hear a lot of Christians confess. There are times in my life when I honestly doubt, am I going to go to heaven or not? I said it. It's out there. You can, all you super spiritual, great religious folks can, can say, well, oh my God, I never feel that way. Well, I do. There are times in my life. I didn't say all the time. I didn't say most of the time. But there are there are there are times in my life when I think the unthinkable, and I recognize, and you should recognize, that it's an attack of the enemy. It's 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 fear, it's anxiety, it's doubt. If you're not being attacked, if the devil is not bothering you, then my friend, you're probably out of the will of God. And I'm, I'm just being honest. Because Satan's not going to bother someone that's not a threat to his kingdom. He's not going to attack and go after people that are not a threat to his kingdom. As a matter of fact, he will probably, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going by what I've seen and, 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 and noticed and observed, he, I think his primary agenda is for people to feel blessed, to feel successful, feel uh, thriving, that are really not truly following Christ, but believe they are. And they, therefore, they think God is just blessing them and, just, and everything's fine. The devil's not going to mess with those people. Those are the ones <clears throat> in Matthew 7 that when they die, they stand before God and they say, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. We did all these great works and miracles in your name. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. That's a horrific thing for someone to hear. It's the worst thing you could ever hear in, in, is to hear God say, depart from me. And so there's a lot of people today that think the unthinkable. There's a lot of people today that are struggling and going through a lot of doubt and a lot of fear. And when you look in the word of God, some of the greatest uh, or some of the people God used mightily went through the exact same thing. I, I really relate a lot to Elijah and John the Baptist, not because I think I'm like them. I'm not. I'm nowhere. I couldn't even tie their shoes. I mean, I... I but I relate to them. I don't worship them, but I relate to them because they come out of the woods. They were kind of lone loners, and that's I don't think that was by choice, and mine's really not by choice either. It just seems it's just where I'm at. And but they had a close relationship with God. And it's they, they really enjoyed God in the outdoor setting. And that's that's me. That that's how I feel about myself. Also they noticed things that other people weren't willing to talk about. And they would say things that other people didn't want to say. <clears throat> I think John Wesley was like that because he was, wasn't welcomed in a lot of pulpits and he had to preach outdoors a lot because he would say things that nobody wanted him to say that was in a religious system. So these guys were used mightily. But guess what? There come a time when Elijah thought was thinking the unthinkable. He, he got to a place where he just wanted to die. He had called fire down from heaven. He had exposed the false god that Israel had turned and was worshiping a false god, Baal. They had false gods or, or uh, altars set up and all this stuff. Elijah comes in and challenges them, their high priest. And he says, if God, your God's God, let him call fire down. If my God be the God, then we'll, we'll, see, we'll see who answers by fire. And many of you, if not all of you know the story, they spent all day calling for their God to bring fire and, 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 and consume the offering that they made. And he wouldn't answer because they don't have a God. 
their God with themselves. But the true and living God, the one that's seated high and lifted up, the one that has created all things and holds our very breath in his hand. As a matter of fact, Yahweh, uh, people that have dove into the Hebrew meaning of that, it's the breath when you, Yahweh, it's how you breathe. We can't pronounce his name, but it, his breath, our breath, our very breath is from God. If you don't breathe, you don't live. And the breath of God, when God blew breath into Adam and created a living soul, that same breath is passed on to us, and passed on because it's the breath of life. Elijah called fire down from heaven, but Elijah was terrified when he got a death threat from a, a woman that challenged him. After he had called fire down from heaven, they, they killed all the false prophets. Jezebel come after him, and he become very fearful. He thought the unthinkable. Lord, just take me. Just kill me. Let me die. There's nobody else left but me. God ended up asked, answering him and speaking to him. And he got recharged and refueled, and he was back on the scene. But I just wanted to I really kind of get sidetracked a little bit. Stick with me. I got somewhere to go with this. But I just want you to understand, if you're thinking the unthinkable, if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling that you're not worthy or you're not worth, you're not worth, worth anything, or, you're, or if you're feeling that, that God is just, why would, if you feel that God would just abandon you, you're not alone. You're not alone. One of the most popular scriptures that people like to quote, and including me, says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. How many times I've preached that? How many times I've heard people quote that? But you know what? Leaped out to me this morning. Leaped out to me. The first three words, three or four words. Trust in the Lord. The first four words. Trust in the Lord. Stop. You could stop there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. But you could stop there. The rest of it, if we trust in the Lord. Now, hold on a minute. This is where it gets really, this is where it's going to get tight. Oh, I trust in the Lord. Do you call him Lord? Or is he your Lord? That's the question we have to answer ourselves. Do I call Jesus Lord? Jesus is Lord. I hear people say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus. But do you act as if he's your Lord? See, I can say a lot of things, and you can too, but how we act. Well, our actions speak louder than words. When we trust the Lord with all our heart, when Jesus is Lord and we surrender our lives to the Lordship of Christ, there's a power. That's really not the right word. There's a security. There's a belonging that when we do happen to think the unthinkable, we can cast it out. That's why this scripture that says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, and 5 that I wrote down this morning, or copied, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Listen now, this is to us. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Now, what's so powerful in this? The whole thing's powerful. But it says, every high thing, casting down imaginations. Somebody say, imagine that. that. Let me know you're still alive. Imagine that. Just type in right now. Imagine that. Somebody please do that. Imagine that. Casting down imaginations and every high thing. Somebody type in high thing. That exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Now think about that. Every imagination and high thing. What is that saying? Thinking the unthinkable. It's thinking the unthinkable. Somebody, somebody needs to talk to me here. Thinking the unthinkable. My God, what if, what if I've got cancer? Oh my God, what if I have a heart attack? Oh my God, what if I lose my business? Oh my God, what if, 
What if I find out my wife's cheating on me or my husband's cheating on me? What if something happens to my child while they're, well, oh my God, all this all the time is thinking the unthinkable. Why do we do that? Why are we always thinking about the worst case scenario? One reason that's happening today is because of this crazy world we live in when the worst case scenario seems to unfold. But the truth is it's exacerbated and promoted because there's an agenda to, to, to heap fear on us, just heaps of fear to control us. People will surrender their freedoms when they're afraid. And the devil knows this. My God, the devil knows more than we do. The devil's been doing this a long time. And he knows that fear will make us give up freedom and liberty just like that. But thanks be to God, there's some warriors around. There's some people that won't surrender. That doesn't, you know what a warrior is? <clears throat> a warrior is not somebody that's not afraid. A warrior is somebody that fights in the face of fear. It's somebody that says, yeah, I feel fear. I feel the I feel the, the 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 cold stinking breath of the enemy on my neck, but I'm not gonna sit down and be a coward and ball up in a knot because if I do, he wins. A warrior says, if I'm gonna die, dadgummit, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out swinging, I'm gonna go out fighting, I'm gonna go out standing, I'm not gonna go out sitting down or afraid. When we think the unthinkable, the enemy got, has us exactly where he wants us. When we think. God has left me. God doesn't want anything to do with it. Am I even going to heaven? When that junk comes into our minds and we think the unthinkable, the number one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to tell anybody. You don't want to say that to nobody because you don't want anybody to think that you would actually think something like that. When the truth of the matter is, there's all kind of people thinking the same thing because it's the same rotten devil talking to the same people trying to distract you and bring you to a place where Jesus is not Lord in your life. If Jesus is Lord, not by lip service, as Jesus said and when he said, they honor me with their mouth and their lips, but their hearts, their hearts are far from me. What was he saying? God looks at the heart. If Jesus is Lord in our lives and we surrender to the Lordship of Christ, this is powerful. What I'm about to say is powerful. You need to listen, but I'm going to tell you, it's simple, it's powerful, and it's scary. Simple, powerful, and it's scary. When we surrender to the Lordship of Christ, this is here it comes. When the stuff hits the fan, the bad stuff, the unthinkable comes, we don't get afraid. We don't say, well, we, we may feel fear at the door, but we don't cower and go, God has left me. We don't cower and go, I'm not going to make it to heaven. What if I, when, when, we, when, you're, when you feel that you've got some kind of major health crisis, you don't go, I don't know if I'm going to really go to heaven. Is there even a heaven? Oh, yeah. All these thoughts will come. But if you've surrendered to the Lordship of Christ and you're walking in obedience to Christ, then you don't belong to yourself. You belong to him. He's your master. And when you have that going on, oh my gosh, that is so powerful and scary because you're not in control anymore. You've never been in control anyway, by the way. But it's complete surrender to the Lordship of Christ. That's why Paul could say, I'm perplexed on every side. I'm cast down but not forsaken. That's why Paul could, could have be whipped and beaten and stoned to death and get back up after they stand around him and pray and he walk, gets back up and go into the same town that stoned him and go right back in there. That's why Paul could say he, he pressed toward the mark of the high calling of God. He wanted his head cut off. He wanted to run and be martyred for Christ. Why? Why would anybody in their right mind want that? Because he had surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. You are looking at a preacher right now that is doing that today. I had done it before. I had surrendered to the Lordship of Christ when I was born again. And I, I, God broke me down like a shotgun, broke me down to the bottom. To the, I was on rock bottom and got me exactly where I needed to be and should have stayed, but I didn't. 
And because I haven't surrendered everything in my life to the Lordship of Christ, not with lip service, not with Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. No, I'm talking about action. Leave it out. Walk it out. Obedience. Then when the, I don't think the unthinkable because I've surrendered to him. In other words, this is the scary part. When stuff comes that you don't want to come, when bad things show up at the door and rings the doorbell, you don't go hide and say, I hope, I hope it doesn't know I'm home. No. You walk to the door and say, this must be God's will for you to be at my door. He's my Lord. He's in control of my life. I don't belong to myself. It's simple. Gosh, I really believe, for me, I'm not speaking for you, but I believe that is one of the major hindrances to, to walk in, in, a, in victory for Christians today is we have not surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. Not with lip service again, but with our action. My little boy told me he was he had some anxiety going on. He says, he says, I, he says I just think, the worst case scenario all the time. That's fear. He's just thinking the worst case scenario. We've all been there. We've all felt that way. This is coming from somebody that, that doesn't understand why he thinks that way. We are adults. We understand this anxiety. We understand things in the world. But you know what? Just because you're a Christian, just because you get born again, doesn't mean that you're not going to have bad thoughts. Does not mean that you're going to not have any doubts. And that's why it's so important that every day, every day we wake up and say, I'm surrendering to the Lordship of Christ. I'm going to take up my cross and follow him. If I die with some kind of awful disease or if I get in a car wreck or something bad, and thinking the unthinkable, I know this sounds negative, but I'm just being honest. The thinking the unthinkable, then it's God's will. It's God's will because I've surrendered to him. But when we're not surrendered to him, and this is the kicker, when you're not surrendered to the Lordship of Christ and you're, you're walking as a Christian by name or tag, but you really don't have that close relationship. Your relationship is based on other people. It's based on going to a church and being around other people, or it's based on other Christian friends. But it's, when you're alone, you don't have that intimate one-on-one -on -one where he's your Lord. Then when things come and trials come, the first thing you're going to think is, God must have left me. He must have abandoned me. And then you're going to start praying and seeking and trying to find him. And he's going to feel like he's a million miles away when he's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He never will. Can you see what I'm talking about? It's, it's just a, it's exactly what the enemy does in our lives. When we go into hospital as a child of God, the number one thing on our mind should be there's a doctor, there's a nurse, or there's somebody in this going to be, and I'm going to run into in this hospital that needs to hear about Jesus. That should be number one. Is it number one? Most of the time not. It's like, my God, don't you care? Why, why have you let this happen to me? Maybe he's got a reason. Maybe if we surrender to the Lordship of Christ, no matter if we're in the world or the hospital or the job place or wherever, we know that he's in control of our lives. I'm going to read this scripture to you, and I'm going to get off of here. By the way, right now, anybody that's still watching, please hit the share button. Just hit the share button. It don't cost you anything, but it sure will help you get this word out. Listen to this. Let this mind be in you. This is Philippians 2, 5, and 11. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you call Jesus Lord? Do I call Jesus Lord? 
do you act like it? Do I act like it? There's a lot of people that say, yeah, I'm a married man. I'm a married woman. But they're, they're committing adultery. But if somebody asked them, they'd say, oh, I'm married. I, I've been married 20 years. I've been married 15 years. I ain't been caught in their mind. They ain't been caught, but they knew what I really was. What's the difference in the spiritual application of that? There's a lot of us that say, I'm a Christian. I, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord. But we commit spiritual adultery every day. Every day. By not trusting him. Not surrendering to what he tells us to do. Doing what we want to do. The way we want to do it. And not wanting anything bad to happen. Or any suffering to come our way. Because we just think in America that if you're a Christian, it is, everything's great. It's your best day now. Haven't we heard that a thousand times on TV? No, that's not really it. Serving Christ and surrendering to the Lordship of Christ means you're like Paul or you're like Peter, James, John. You're like all them before, Elijah, Elisha, uh, the three Hebrews that went in the fire. Um, we're like them. Daniel goes into the lion's den. When you serve God and you stand, you surrender to the Lordship of Christ, you know what's going to happen? He's going to let some stuff happen to you that's going to glorify God the Father and going to strengthen your faith, and you will see some supernatural power move in your life. But you're going to have to go through the fire to see it. Many of us don't want that. Many of us don't want to feel the heat. But that's just the way it is. That's the truth. If you think the unthinkable, if you think that, hey, I don't even know if I'm going to heaven. I don't even know if there is a heaven. I don't know if God really loves me. I don't know if God will abandon me. First of all, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there a time in your life when you made a commitment to Jesus Christ by faith? You surrendered your life to him. You believed that he died on the cross for you. You believe he rose again the third day. His blood was shed for your sins. He rose again the third day, and you're following him. You know without a shadow of a doubt that the Holy Spirit drawed you to the cross, and you were saved, then... Settled it. Settled it. I know I was saved. I remember the day. Does, you know, if you don't remember the day, you remember the time. I mean, you remember what it was like. You remember what happened. When that happened, you popped up on Satan's radar, and he's been constantly bombarding you, trying to stop you from being effective and serving Christ. Recognize the spiritual warfare. Recognize that we battle spiritual wickedness in high places. Recognize that you are a child of God. Recognize that He, God will not lie. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And make a commitment with me today to surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Make your commitment to God. I'm going to make mine. I'm surrendering to the Lordship of Christ. Not with words, but with action. That means before I do anything, Anything. Maybe where I go eat today. Lord, is this where I, you want me to go and eat? If he answers me, great. If he doesn't, then I'll just assume he wants me to go where I pick wherever I want to go. But I'm going to at least ask him. I know that sounds weird, but how many times do we ride down the road and never talk to God? Well, if I was riding with you in your pastor's seat and we rode an hour and a half, you never said anything to me, I'd be ready to get out. I said, this cat is weird. What's the difference? You know, we can talk on the phones, but can't. why don't we talk to God? I don't know. Maybe I'm rambling. God bless you guys today. Thank you for sticking with me. Hit the share button if you haven't shared. Let me know where you're watching from before you get off here. Comment your uh, town, state you're in. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be accepted in his sight. Oh, Lord.